very warm welcome to our second choreographer's cut. My name is Emma Gladstone and I run Dance Umbrella Festival. Uh, we had to cancel this year's festival um, due to the pandemic, but we're um, going to be sharing a digital festival this November. And we've asked three choreographers to join us to talk a little bit more detail about their work while we watch um, a clip of a work of their choice. And I'm really happy to welcome Demetrius Papianu today. He's going to be talking about Primal Matter, which was a piece that we presented in 2016 at the Truman Brewery in London, sold out show. Um, and um, Demetrius is a uh, director, a choreographer, performer, also a visual artist, um, who's been working internationally um, for many years now. And um, I'm really delighted to welcome you virtually, you in Athens and me in UK here. So welcome, Demetrius. It's lovely to have you with us. It's lovely to be with you. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I cannot hug you and I'm not there. <laughs> and I, I, hope, I hope everybody's going to excuse my heavy Greek accent. But we um... can enjoy <laughs> that. We can enjoy that. Um, so Demetrius, tell us a bit about um, Primal Matter. Uh, you made it in 2012. Was that when you first created it? Yes, yes, yes. It was. It was a. Uh, it, was, it, it was a. A strange time for me. It was. It was the time that the, the financial crisis has just happened in Athens, and I had just come out of an enormous production. Uh, one of my favorite ones that was called Inside. It was a six hour long uh, installation. Uh, that was a, a very expensive production and uh, it didn't go well financially at all. And this was the first time in a long series of very successful running shows that had allowed me basically to have a very wide platform in, in, in Athens. And I, ha I, I was able to um, come up with a crazy idea and the producers would come and produce it because people would come. So this was the end of an era for me, and I was I had to quit my big studio and I had to uh, go back internally to my uh, to the core of my uh, questioning of what it is to create. And 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 I entered the studio without having any plan, and I realized that if there is anything interesting for me to do in the midst of the big financial crisis, is to maybe attempt to do something with the minimum possible resources. I have been blessed to have the maximum possible resources after after the success of the Olympic Games of the, of the opening ceremony that I created. So I, I dived into a small um, uh, underground, not studio, but a, a storage place that I had with, with a, a friend of mine who was willing to experiment. I, I started it with uh, Tadeo Lisen, Philippe, not, not um, Harris Lefanis, that I presented it the second year and internationally. So my first colleague was a Brazilian dancer that was here in Athens, and we started experimenting. And I decided to take the risk myself as well after uh, 10 years that I hadn't been on stage. Uh, I was 49 at the time. And after two and a half months, I called uh, our, our beloved Jorgos Lukos, who was still the artistic director of the Athens Festival, and I told him, I think I have something. Would you be interested? And he said, yes, I would be interested. So it, it was a procedure that completely reversed any professional procedure that is happening uh, in our times. Like you get the producer, you know the date, you know the budget. I just started creating something, maybe. I found myself there and then I found a place to show it. It's happened again now with ink in the COVID uh, lockdown. So this was, this was the beginning of Primal Matter. This was, this was why I suddenly limited and therefore liberated myself from the resources, and I decided to do something without design of light, without with only recycled sets, with myself and somebody else, and with one costume and almost no music. And I found myself diving inside my most favorite work. Mm -hmm. So the elemental, the, there's, a, it's it's interesting the simplicity of 
of the set and the lighting that is often manipula manipulated by you. Um, in a way, then that came from having to change your work processes. But there's also something that you have actively chosen about that the material in it of plywood and water and a tin bucket and there's very basic simple things there so was it partly driven by cost as well as by um aesthetics then i i, I did not have a, a specific problem in creating a more expensive show had i wanted to uh, it, it was a kind of a personal bet, a kind of, a, of an internal manifesto. Let's, let's see, at this age, am I able to touch upon good poetry with the most humble elements? Am, am I able to do mm -hmm. that? Could, could, could I possibly? Mm -hmm. I, I, had, I had a very important feature in my painting when I was a young man. His name is Yanis Tsaroufis, and he's an icon of Greek. Uh, uh, painting, but he always, he was, he would always cherish the sacredness of simple things, and he would always talk about uh, a good poetry comes from ephemeral nothing thing that, with um, the eyes of the poet, can become uh, can, can offer great. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it was not that I couldn't. It was, I, w I was playing this game with myself. I'd like us to have a look at it because it's something, the elements of softness with um, physical, it's not endurance as much as f pushing the, the kind of edges of what's physically possible that you, I see in it. Um, so maybe we can, maybe we can start in and, and have a look and have a look at those, all the many threads that are running through it. I, I, I spent a lot of time trying to find a way to edit a summary that mm -hmm. con, uh, connects, uh, that, that includes the whole story, mm -hmm. uh, so that someone can analyze the structure, but at the same time to find a way through editing to create some kind of thrill uh, and some kind of emotional impact as you're watching it on, uh, on, on, on your screen. Anyway, how we start, what, what was also an interesting gesture, a kind of punishing but honest gesture for me, is that I was actually um, uh, checking the tickets. I was meeting the public personally, one yeah. by one, as yeah. they were entering, mm. uh, as if I was an usher. So mm. I, I wanted to be the host from the beginning, and I didn't want to occupy any kind of um, concentration, uh, isolated room before I meet the public. I wanted. I wanted to play this game of, of being um, uh, um, washed and fresh and clean when I and mm. when I welcome the people and to to end up completely destroyed at the end of the show. And this is uh, this this is uh, filmed in the original space. This was a garage, okay. so we didn't have to build the wall. The wall was there. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the length of the stage that we created was 35 meters. Mm -hmm. And we installed the grandstands of the people. And this is a long introduction with both of people ha hiding their heads. I am I'm having a garbage can as a head and I produce shit ideas. And I step on those as I proceed in my older age. And according to Freud, shipping is the first creation that we ever make, the first product of our body. And then, <laughs> the, <laughs> and then uh, Michalis is nude and he's carrying the frame. Uh, the frame that could be um, thought of as the frame of the painter, but the frame is also the actual body is our physical presence, where we kind of don't fit in, but we are in our physical presence. What do you mean you don't fit in? I mean, there is, uh, later on, there is a, um, there is a small, uh, there's a small um, 
solo that I do where I explode myself inside the mm -hmm. frame. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do mean that over overcoming the physical limitations of this world is actually the quest of humanity, no? Mm. Um, that I think that is our, 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 our hunger of, of um, believing. You mean to reach, or, reach beyond the frame, you mean? Of course, that's why we invented yeah. religion. Mm. I mean, we, 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 we want, we need something more than our mm. material existence. We are craving mm. for that. And my part in this, in this uh, work is probably the, the part of the mind, of the psyche, the, the, man, the, 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 um, the intellectual, complicated, self-destructive and, and completely cannibalistic creature, while Michalis is nature itself, beauty itself, uh, simplicity of existence uh, itself, so we are kind of the two the two sides of the same of the same personality in a way. He's also youth and unmaturity. So uh, he is carrying the frame, and I'm carrying my ideas as mm -hmm. I walk. On them. So this was the kind of uh, introduction that I thought. So I, I, I do need I do need to clarify that all this theoretical bullshit is not is not uh, that I'm talking about these things that I think about after I create the piece, yeah. and not before. And, mm -hmm. and there is a there is a, an an instinctive, um, uh, as well as intellectual methodology of selecting uh, the elements and putting them in in order. Mm -hmm. But the instinctive part is more valuable for me. And okay. all, 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 the, all the thoughts that I'm sharing now are after many years of working and reworking the same work and editing it, and now I can talk about it. But it's nothing that I've written down before I ever went in the studio. It's so you're exploring the order of what you're making is not in your head before you go into the studio? Not consciously. No. Okay. Not consciously. I, I, I Also, going into the studio, I don't even know what I'm going to do. Mm. And what we're watching courage. now, of course, it's, is, a, is, is the attempt of one character to go through the other. It's the attempt here, we also see the, how they are one. The head is, is placed exactly at the place. So it's like a it's like an agony of, of one entity to understand the other entity. And this is why it's important that you're both um, the same the same sex and roughly the same size, that there's a yes that, that duality is there. Definitely. It has it has to be the same the same dimension. Mm. It has to be the yin and yang relationship, mm. the, the body and shadow relation, relationship. And, and it's, it's, it's important that, uh, that the body is stronger and younger and more beautiful, and the mind is and nude, and the mind is dressed and uh, more articulate and more twisted in a way. Mm. But there's also another, another thing that interests me that you Londoners can check out in the British Museum because all this first part comes from the Parthenon friezes. Okay. All this first part comes from the, the, um, the battles with the centaurs. Mm -hmm. And centaurs are a symbol of, of uh, um, humanity not yet liberated from animal instincts. Mm -hmm. So the first part also for me is this start of the history of representation that is best exampled in uh, the Parthenon friezes of the reliefs. It's not yet three-dimensional. It's stuck on the wall, mm -hmm. it's connected to its background. And, and as you saw, the whole part up to now is against the wall and it's kind of two-dimensional. It doesn't have the three dimensions. 
It's yes. flat as it travels. It's flat, yes. Mm -hmm. It's flat as it travels, and then it will go on to the history of sculpture and painting that becomes three-dimensional, and then there is an irony about the contrapostal, which is the explosive moment in the history of sculpture, where from the symmetrical kuros, uh, we go to the contemplating, resting figures of the contrapostal. Mm -hmm. So here, it, here is the here is the the moment that I told you about, where the in front of his frame, the black figure uh, explodes, and it's it was like exploding from the mind. It's so interesting for me, the gap of time and how you play with that for us to look at the images and find resonances of our own as well. Um, that there's a logic, even if you're not sure of, of what it is, you can, you can feel it behind the detailed decisions right the way through the piece. I hope that's true. I don't know. But what I can tell you is that now we have constructivism. Now we have a play with the two elements and the colors. And of course, my cartoon growing up background, you see the black feet and the naked feet and this. But this is like a, um, this is like a, a throwback of the archetypes, the black elongated one and the, and the more square flesh tone one, that this is what you're watching. You're watching a game of those two Mm -hmm. values and it, it just um it slides through the, that uh the history of abstract painting as well and you see that we are playing with this uh, idea and then we're moving to yes no and also humor though that oh yes many points in here we'll i'm sure we'll come on to other ones i don't want to stop you now yes like i'm a sculptor here and i am I, I, I always talk about it like the gym, mm -hmm. like how you go to the gym and you take care of your body. But I'm also his creator, but at the same time, I'm checking like my own uh, kind of perfection of form, if mm -hmm. possible. So it's like uh, in the workshop of the creator, but of course it's Frankenstein as well. And this is the Christianity, of course, because this is washing the feet, mm -hmm. like Jesus did. And then here we have the imprint of the feet, like uh, in Jesus' he head. And thankfully, people laughed <laughs> at Jesus', Jesus face. But you know, there's more to that, because how to step? You know, this will culminate in the end with the sacrifice of my leg to his leg, and we share both two feet in order to be able to find a way to step together. Yes, and in you, the beginning, you kind of blend, don't you? Yes. Your bodies so this, blend. Yes. We try this. Uh, I first tried those optical illusions in this uh, creation where I almost overdid it in the next ones that I. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> optical, I exhaust the possibility of optical illusions. But, but the sacredness of the step. The sacredness of the, you know, the, the, the up, the, the standing position of the humans, the, the, the upright pos position that we assumed in, in, in a certain evolutionary state, and and the the, um, the the footprint that is also the the trace of the existence. So it's not only um, the foot fetish and the Christianity metaphors and the joke about Christianity, but it is also about the importance of stepping, because in the end we will step together as a blended uh, creature. So have you stepped off the Greek freeze and into a 3D Christian? Yes. We're, get, we're marching through time a little bit. Yes. And of course, before you just saw the, the step with the shadow, the play with the shadow, mm -hmm. that, that I am the shadow of the, of the body. And now we have the three-dimensional sculpture. 
with a contra poster. And now we have even more the irony. This is a personal irony because I, this is a touristic cell of decapitated um, Greek statues. <laughs> and this is something like as a presenter, and this was, uh, this was a joke because I also uh, 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 twisted his genitals to look as if they were uh, chopped off like they are from time in, in most of the, um, of, of the Greek statues because they mm -hmm. stick out. Mm -hmm. But you know, in my mind, as I was doing that, it was also a kind of, a, a kind of therapeutic sarcasm about myself having done the, the opening ceremony. Because in this whole uh, uh, paranoid um, uh, exploitation of the body, I was like selling the beauty of the body and the decapitated, um, not decapitated, the, the fragmented uh, museum pieces, as if I was a, a magician presenter. And this mm -hmm. is, of course, ironic for my own identity, for my own fixation of the, my national identity, and also with what I had done previously with the Olympic ceremonies. Okay. And here is a small, uh, a small uh, tribute to uh, Auguste Rodin, who would, uh, with one candle, check his um, uh, statues in the dark by lighting them and moving the candle to see all the volumes and how they are. I didn't uh, know that. And he's still got his head here. Yes, now we go to the, the maximum circus stand where we... Um, and I'm presenting him, of course. But this is one of the things that's in, and it's funny using the film because you can really see the detail of the choreography of every gaze and um, you can see Michaelis's anxiety as he knows what's coming, or yes, just the glances, yes. which it's nice to see right up close. And then we go crazy with more and more, and then we have a Christ as well. I'm presenting the body with as many possibilities. There is a hunger here to present every possible thing. We, we turn ourselves into a kind of a circus in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Until a break in the show where I seem to be alone. And then in the studio, struggling. And then I am like, uh, what's, what's this? Uh, um, Crushed? Pygmalion. It's Pygmalion, Pygmalion. Like Pygmalion. Yeah, yeah. crushed by my own creation, okay. but at the same time crushed by my own physical, but my own body. And this is mm. the ridiculousness of him standing on me and then trying to save me at the same time, mm. which is completely impossible. So now suddenly we were introduced to the... Uh, the strength of the body over the mind. Because until now, we thought that the mind was controlling or mm -hmm. there was an equal battle. But now we were introduced to the element that the body can dominate. Reverses, why, reverses that quite literally turns the table, so to speak. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's why I also, I'm pissed off and I leave the stage and I let the audience for a long time with the body alone. Mm. And the body not being able to do anything, exposed alone. And then I return and I chop off his leg, which is like a punishment, but it's also the beginning of, a, of, of an optical illusion that will follow later, the mutual sacrifice of the two entities. Then we have this connection of me eating and him shitting, which is another connection that we are the same um, body. body. And then like a father washing the child or like a farmer washing the cow or like uh, I am 
washing him after his act of shifting. And this is uh, one of the most valuable moments of the show for me. This is... Uh, when you say valuable... It was extraordinary for both of us to experience this moment after the effort of almost three quarters have passed. Mm -hmm. And he could enjoy the water and I could enjoy uh, the element as well. Now I am drinking as if he's pissing and I'm drinking his fluids. And after that, we had this tenderness moment. That was very valuable for both of us because we have more fight after that. And now we have the moment where it seems like I'm an old man and he's preparing me to die. So he has me on the table as if a son taking care of the father. And then we have the image of the dead man with the spirit and the mind and the complexity above and the body underground. But it's not over. You still have some more blending to do. We have a fight. We have a balance. A mutual balance. I'm balancing my the frame on my head, and he's dragging his uh, um, the table of 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 sculpting him, and he lies on it. For me, this acts. This whole preview scene acts as a as a as a strange entrance into the final um, mutual sacrificial uh, room, mm -hmm. sacrifice room. It was like uh, all these realizations of who is in control and what kind of battle it's, is at stake with this coexistence. It's like we both through this scene realize what we have to do next in order to survive, which is uh, this kind of painful coexistence that will go on. And here is the solo where I seemingly take off my foot mm -hmm. from my body. Aye. Which is um, a show off of my natural turning because I, I have a, an almost uh, Japanese turn in ability. I don't have a hint of a turn out, but I do have a <laughs> turn in. <laughs> You're using what you've got, Dimitrius. Yes, yes. But it's well, also... I'm glad because I feel that's one of the moments, including the bit when he's walking on, when you're the shadow of just the pain, I imagine, within this. So, But this is not the most painful part of the so here here is this is my favorite image and what comes next also that is very humorous that i just have to hop yeah to get there i am very thankful of these ideas this is this is the this is the my favorite moment <laughs> <laughs> how do you get there <laughs> those 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 creatures to get some unity that follows. Yeah, because now, because now, when in the good shows, if we are successful, we have um, created an atmosphere there that is something is extremely strange and simple, and there is a possibility of terror and laughter at the same time on stage. Yeah, and this is something I find really interesting is the the, the scale of your imagination or the, the, the scale of the resonance that comes from your images that 
is mixed in with humor and i know we've talked about this before of um buster keaton and the kind of slapstick yeah, um, elements my, that you use i i if, if if i could i would only make comedies if if i if i really could if my imagination was there i i think it's the best vehicle for communi for artistic communication i think there's something extremely liberating when you can make people laugh. But I, I cannot always do that. And, and, and when it's in between tragedy and comedy, it's even best. Mm. So this is the, let's say, the uh, this common step that could be uh, the finale, mm -hmm. but we chose to make one final further take towards a more extravagant uh, performative sacrifice in a way. And for that, I also give him the power and we have the only theatrical light that lights up for this finale. We turn off everything and he puts the, he unites the plug and we have one follow spot on, on us. And as the true body, he holds the plug. He's the one who's going to apply the show. He's going to signify the death of the show and not me, even if I am the manipulator of the show. And then we do the final um, image of connecting both legs and standing up and furthermore being able to walk like four steps, something like that. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> so the monster of existence. But also giving birth to you. Yes. <laughs> While I'm supporting him to walk. <laughs> This is the most painful physical yeah. part of the show. Yeah. <laughs> for, for me, at wow. least. Wow. And then the body chooses the end. Yes. By pulling the plug. Yes. Great. Of course, there are, there are many, many other things we could talk about, but this was like the first, let's say. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, there's... Re reading. The first reading. Masses, but it's did. lovely. It's lovely to have the opportunity to go through even this much and to hear your own ideas and the resonances of what come across, because there's a lot of space in terms of time, because you do work, it's slow, and you work, you allow time for things to resonate a lot. And I suppose that it's interesting to hear some of your ideas, some that are very clear, but other ones that I feel there's enough space for people to draw their own references of which there are many in inside it. When you yes. look at it now, do you, how does it, you know, you made it eight years ago now, or you opened it eight years ago. How does it, feel now you've just done another duet ink that's um has a lot of water in it as well yes and, um, and it's and it's again uh, uh, me dressed up and uh and a, a young dancer uh, completely nude and uh, uh, and in a way it is a kind of a continuation or a zooming in to a moment of primal matter but now the difference of age is so dramatic Mm -hmm. that it completely swallows the show. And it's also with a black background, which, because Prime and Matter is with white background. And this is what one can say about the show as the first thing that one should say about the show. It's very important because our theaters are black and it's very difficult to create images like that in black theaters. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. but, this, um, but ink is it, it's a smaller it's a, for studio theaters no no no, no. It's, it's a larger it's scale yes, yes but in a black is. box more of a black box than you yes, you yes. chose to use for primal matter yeah no primal matter i chose to use an unconventional uh, yeah space mm. that requires as you know because we were uh, struggling two years to bring it to, <laughs> to dance long and time to, to find that space yeah, to find the space that uh, that can take it yeah and do I, you... I see, no, I see it with, a, with 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 great tenderness that's good i'm glad to hear that after all the thinking and the research it's a treat thank you so much it's really um generous of you to share it and it's it's lovely to see it again but it's also fascinating to hear the detail and the the scale of the the thinking and the history in a way behind it all is so full of different resonances i mean a, a lot of your work i find does that there's a lot of references back to history of of visual art in particular biblical references and in terms of the greek um the Parthenon that I hope might be in your home city at some point. <laughs> in my lifetime, I'm, I'm <laughs> but, um, no, it's um, it's a treat. Thank you so much, Dominic. It's been real, real pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>